Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show with your host, David Lawrence. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. I'm absolutely delighted to have with us today Basil El Kusa. Basil is the CEO of QuickUp. Basil, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Basil, I thought we were going to be doing this from London, but you're in Dubai, and there's a good reason for that. I don't know if you can share with our listeners a bit about your company, who you are, and uh, yeah, why, why are we speaking in Dubai today? Yeah, um, so my name is Basil Kusa. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of QuickUp. And QuickUp is a, uh, a delivery as a service, basically. So what we, are, what we do is we enable uh, restaurants and retailers to deliver faster and more conveniently to their consumers. What we've built is, is uh, effectively a decentralized uh, system and infrastructure that enables any business to plug in uh, and use for its own deliveries. What we bring to the market is a faster way and a more convenient and a more flexible way for uh, businesses to deliver. And we, wanted, we understood that consumers um, expectations have been shifting a lot over the past few years and how they interact with the digital economy. So mm -hmm. they, people want more convenience. They want more flexibility. They want to get goods when they want them. And, and, and what we are building is the ability, an enabler for all businesses to provide that level of service to their customers. Fantastic. And what Dan, I know you've got about 60 people in the company. You've you've actually shifted operations now from from Europe or London to to Dubai. Can you share with us a little bit about how that came about and, and what the journey's been like? Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, we we started off, you know, we started off this business in, in, in London. And actually what we built in the first place was a consumer marketplace that gave uh, the ability for consumers to go onto on our app, place an order from any retailer, uh, and get goods delivered to them directly. We then realized that the value of what we were building, the infrastructure, the logistics infrastructure that was uh, enabling our own app, uh, the value lied in in taking that and enabling all retailers to provide that level of service directly from their own channels to their own customers. Mm -hmm. So, and along that, and so we kind of started pivoting the business in that direction. And along that journey, we, we, we realized that there are parts of the world uh, where e-commerce has not been a normal part of uh, reality for the past 10 to 15 years at ha as it has been in the West. And we saw that uh, these parts of the world present an opportunity for us to bring a more modern delivery infrastructure as sort of a, a standard to the market and el enable these markets to kind of leapfrog in terms of the way that they operate and the, and the technologies that they use. And we spotted Dubai as being one of those markets. So as we were pivoting our business, we, we, we launched Dubai and um, as, as an expansion to, to London. And what we very quickly realized was the, that the take up was much faster. We were able to service uh, clients a lot uh, quicker and uh, and grow our business with them a lot quicker, uh, and we were able to uh, educate the market towards shifting uh, in the direction of more convenient delivery. Um, and so, at at a certain moment, we we started looking at the two um, models side by side, and we were seeing that uh, we had a market that was doing really well. Uh, the economics was, were much more compelling. Uh, the market is uh, ripe for uh, for innovation, and it's ready to adapt because it has no legacy that it needs to displace. Um, and and therefore we 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 had to we had to make a decision on how we spend our capital, how we how we uh, deploy our focus, and the. And, and eventually we made the decision to move here. It wasn't easy. It was one of the toughest decisions we've ever had to make. But then you unleash the power of like laser sharp focus. And what we very quickly saw was when we, when we ended up with this single market focus with a single kind of like environment, we were able to uh, multiply the 
the growth that we were initially seeing, and we had we were very quickly able to um, re uh, replace the foregone revenue that we had in 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 London very quickly in Dubai in a matter of months. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to run the business much more efficiently at a much lower cost base, and and we're now much more nimble and agile and more competitive in the market altogether because of this move. Brilliant, brilliant. Sounds like an exciting journey. And there's a there's a podcast in itself for the pain that you perhaps and your team have been through to get where you've got to so far. So look, I'm going to jump straight into the questions. We might come back to some of this stuff shortly. Um, but I wonder if you can share with our listeners um, what a typical day in the business looks like for you as the as the business leader. I think uh, um, one one thing that I would say about typical days is that I don't necessarily have a typical day. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it's quite funny that like, I'm, I'm not a man of routine and in some way, you know, you kind of attract that kind of energy. So it tends to be that like every day is completely different than any other. Um, but I have been, um, I have been putting some sort of, uh, uh guidelines to what must happen on certain days. And then that's kind of been, um, uh, been a, uh, in some way uh, a way for me to make sure that I actually get the stuff done that I need to get done. So um, I, I, wake, I wake up in the morning and uh, when, when I go to work, I say I, I know that there's a certain time that I need to allocate to responding to emails, certain time that I need to allocate to sitting with the teams. And I allow that to, to fluctuate as I, as, as I see fit and as, as the requirement comes towards me. So um, and, and, and that also changes, uh, based on what are the core focuses in that quarter for the business. So if I'm raising money, a lot of my time during a day is going to be out in meetings, uh, uh, the pretty much the whole day back to back doing meetings and calls, uh, with, with, uh, investors or potential leads that are going to introduce me to investors. Um, if, if I'm focusing on, on product, I'll be doing a lot of, uh, on the ground, spending time with, with, uh, with the teams and, and, in in understanding the problems and, and getting creative about what certain solutions we could come up with. So, um, but within, within, uh, these fluctuations there, there is sort of, uh, uh, guidelines that I need to adhere to, which is the amount of time that I need to spend doing catch-ups with the team, responding to emails, uh, looking at uh, looking at our figures uh, and, and, and guiding the strategy. Can you name someone who's perhaps has had an influence on you, even in, in the last six years, particularly perhaps, um, but has had an influence on you as a, within your business and perhaps has shaped, um, you know, your thinking and, and how have they helped you? Um, I think that like, one of the things that I've learned uh, uh, very quickly uh, doing what I do is that you know you 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 hire people in the company and and you hire people that can um, really bring to the table what you can't and and I've I would say like I've done I've done a lot of work on myself first <laughs> to to be able to do that, but then, uh, which which I will explain, which is basically, um, I spent a lot of time uh, trying to learn from people that I work with and trying to assimilate some some of the great characteristics characteristics that they bring, and in terms of their work ethic, their behavior, uh, and and I've had a, quite quite a few people in at QuickUp that have uh, had a huge influence on the way that I do what I do on a daily basis. Um, so so that's that's my answer there i mean yeah no that's great what um what do you do to keep your employees engaged in the business uh the main thing the main thing is basically giving people the um the platform to bring their ideas forward i think that as much as you think that you know what needs to be done when you hear it from the person that's working on the specific area that you're trying to change or improve, they will bring they will bring a lot more depth than you would have ever thought of in terms of the approach, uh, things that you may have not thought of. But the the challenge is that you you need to create the environment in which uh, uh, these people feel that they can actually 
say what uh, say what they think and and bring their ideas forward and that their ideas are being taken seriously and followed up on and i think that that's what we do well at quick up is that we um as soon as we uh, you know as soon as there's a solution that we're thinking about within a certain area all the boundaries of like hierarchy are broken in those meetings in those uh, in those moments in which we're creating something new and i think that that's what uh, engages people at quick up Basil, what's the uh, what's perhaps the biggest challenge that you're seeing, or you you feel that business leaders are facing right now? I think that um, I think that like business leaders today are uh, facing this challenge of uh, innovation. You know, a lot of industries are being um, disrupted and very quickly. Um, and, um, you know, you, you, you see a lot of, uh, uh, large corporations that want to get, uh, much closer to startups and try to, uh, learn how to operate like startups themselves. And some do that by, uh, uh creating these, uh, departments that, you know, are, are free to, to experiment and, and to, uh, have their own kind of like internal acceleration programs. And some do it by investing in startups and getting closer and trying to to learn from them i think that you know in our world today uh it's safe to say that like any uh large industry is uh is contested in the way that it currently operates so it is uh i the the way that business leaders adapt to enabling uh innovation and creativity to be brought into their businesses i think is the biggest challenge and what, what's perhaps the best piece of business advice you could share with us that you've had? Uh, the best, the best uh, piece of advice that uh, that I've gotten as I was a kid actually is um, follow up. You know, uh, I think that you know there's a million things that you do uh, uh, a day. There's there are so many people that you speak to. Uh, and there are a lot of missed opportunities by just not seeing thing, seeing things through to the end. I think that that applies to me in, in, in a lot of things that I've done. Once I've kind of adopted this philosophy, I've realized that I've unlocked a lot of value from things that I never thought uh, would have any uh, just by seeing things through, just by seeing conversations through. Um, and, and and yeah, that's, that's what I'd say about it. Now, you- I wanted to know a little bit about what excites you, particularly around the on-demand demand logistics industry. But what what is exciting you over the next couple of years in in your industry? This industry is is quite a quite a controversial one. It's been seeing uh, so many companies come in and out, and so many different models being adopted. Uh, there's the question. Uh, there's a question of automation. Um, there is a question of decentralization and um, and kind of bringing um, use, utilizing the city's as, city's assets in a completely different way. So um, so let me give you an example. I mean, you know, there we've been talking about autonomous vehicles for quite a while. One of the main uh, issues with last mile in general is like the profitability model. Uh, and and a lot argue that the way that we're actually going to make instant delivery a sustain sustainable in the long run is by uh, by by automating it by having these autonomous vehicles on the road. Do, and everybody's been uh, you know there's been a lot of debate on what that timeline actually looks like. Is it is it five years? Is it ten years? Um, I I I do not see any evidence of this being um, being implemented in the in the next five years yet. But I, but we we as a business are doing some 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 research and some work in that in that uh, in that uh, direction because we see it as a very uh, interesting uh, uh, evolution that might happen to to our space. What's exciting about our space is that it will impact the way that cities are run. What you see in front of you, the vehicles that are moving around and how they're moving goods. How are we going to be shipping parcels very quickly uh, in the future? Is it going to be, happy, be happening through these Hyperloop pneumatic tubes, uh, or is it going to be done through these autom- uh, automated uh, uh, ground vehicles or air, uh, air vehicles? Um, we, we believe that basically 
every business in, the, in, in moving in the future, moving towards the future is going to be digitized. There is so much that is going on around enabling businesses to set up websites, to set up uh, websites very quickly, to set up their e-commerce propositions very easily. Uh, and, and so delivery just becomes like a plugin as far as part of that. And, and so what does that mean for, for, um, uh, for the traditional logistics uh, environment, where you had a lot of businesses storing goods in in uh, in warehouses of uh, of their three PLs, if you have a a store that is opening up in today's world, they're already thinking about being omnichannel. They're already thinking about utilizing that space to deliver a, a, as well. So this the concept of decentralization of of parcel delivery comes comes in in that uh, in that regard. And that's a very interesting trend that we we're, we're watching very closely. What 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 are you doing within the organization to really look after your employees and your team's well-being? Um, by creating by creating a space where people um, can work the way they like to work. Uh, by creating a space where people can, uh, you know, we're, we're we're not we're not rigid on on time like you work when you think you should we want the best work to be done we are we are open for people to say you know we, we don't know how to do this we need we need we need to skill up on this area and so we'll provide whatever is necessary for someone to go learn whether it's uh, internal or or external um uh, we uh, we basically uh, there was a point in time where we had uh, yoga and meditation uh, classes running um, at QuickUp on on a, uh, twice a week, uh, which is something that we would like to bring back uh, again soon. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like uh, we listen we listen to our employees. We are we're a very tightly knit family, so um, uh, we whatever kind of um suggestion that in terms of how we work that comes through is something that ends up being implemented very easily because we listen is is there perhaps a a, a very quick story that you've got from your childhood that perhaps influenced your work ethic in later life that you could share um look i grew up in a <laughs> i grew up in a very troubled place but one with a lot of resilience. Uh, I grew up in Lebanon. I'm, I'm a Lebanese citizen. I've witnessed a couple of wars. I've witnessed constant change and, and constant uncertainty. Um, I've, I've also uh, uh, witnessed a lot of um, uh, prosperity. I've grown up in a family where I've seen my father and his brothers build a, a business from from nothing to to becoming one of uh, uh, the national leaders in, in in their space, and I saw that in an environment where you had this in, uh, this like field of uncertainty, and so I think all of that shaped me in being who I am, in in in, in always uh, um, in always finding the opportunity, even in the darkest time, and always uh, finding a way out, and in always pushing forward. Um, uh, and in getting creative with our with with solutions, I mean, we've lived in times where you know you you needed to figure out uh, how to uh, manage your household without electricity and without hot water uh, for 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 days, and 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 so that triggers a certain part of your your mind where where you kind of um, thinking of pr problem solving and it comes quite naturally, basically. Mm -hmm. What um what do you think your industry you've touched on it a little bit already sorry but what do you think your industry is going to look like in five years time and how might that impact your your business model again? Um, I, I mean I, I've 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 touched on a, a f quite quite a few things in in the previous question you asked I, I think that uh, as I said uh, you know what what are autonomous vehicles going to do to um, delivery prices then delivery volumes and then therefore uh the way that we uh the way that we basically move goods from from point a to 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 point b uh, is going to change greatly uh i think that's the kind of the 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 main uh 
seismic shift, if you will, that we might be seeing in our industry. What if if you were given your twenty year old self one piece of advice looking back now? What's the one thing you'd say to yourself? Um, <laughs> uh, go for a lot of the business ideas that you had in mind that you didn't go for because they ended up uh, being big successes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, okay. Uh, I, I, I'm sure everyone has ideas that end up being implemented. There's no one original idea, but um, basically. Uh, is like just go for it i mean i think that um you, you we we tend to overthink things and we tend to over analyze our situations i think that that uh slows you down in uh, in making the step to kind of rely on yourself and and and, and start a business and when you start a business you think that you uh, you've made that decision and therefore in your mind you're kind of set on realizing that okay uh, I know exactly what success looks like, and I know exactly what I'm getting into. And the truth is, all of these, all of these realities are completely shifted uh, by the by the second year you're in the business because you realize that you know value could be elsewhere, and and the the market dynamics can change, and and the people that you hire might kind of uh, also uh, shed lights on certain elements that you may have never thought of. So, you know. You just need to roll with it and you just need to kind of take what life gives and be very open to um, uh, to what comes your way. Basil, thanks for sharing that with us and thanks for sharing a bit of your journey, particularly your, your transition to Dubai. A bit warmer over there, hopefully, than it is back in old England. <laughs> um, what's the best way if people want to find out more about the company, perhaps want to find out about working with you or working for the company? What's the best way they can connect with you or find out more about the company? Um, I mean, uh, quick, quickup.com, uh, uh, you, uh, that's Q U I Q U P.com. And, uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, be contacted on Basel at quickup.com, which is B A S S E L at Q U I Q U P.com. Basil, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed our chat. We really hope you enjoyed the podcast today. If you want to listen to more exclusive tips and life lessons from our guest, go to the resources page at vineresources.com. 